Hello my writerly friends. Today we are talking about Scrivener. Specifically, Scrivener's Inspector. If you have ever looked to the right on your Scrivener screen and just thought, what the hell is this? There's metadata, note cards, images, summary, tags, all these colors and words and you're not sure what they mean. There's a lot of useful stuff in there, but it can look a little bit daunting. Well, it's simpler than you think. So without further ado, let's hop over to my Scrivener screen. Okay, let's slide over to my work in progress. To reveal the inspector, just click that blue eye in the top right and the pane will open on the right hand side of your screen. Here we're looking at the inspector for the entire manuscript. We only have two options, notes and project references. I showed you in a previous video how you can import documents and websites directly into your research folder. And that is a fantastic tool, but if you use it too much, you will actually bog down your Scrivener project and it will be slow to open and save. Well, a way around that is to use the references in your inspector. All you do is open that up, click the plus button, and you can add internal references, references that link to other documents within your Scrivener file, or you can add external references. So you would go in and input a link, say, to a website, and now you have the reference, but it opens in an external browser. So if I click on this, it's going to open in Safari. That way you have access to these research materials without slowing down your Scrivener project with a lot of data. Okay, next we're going to move to a folder. Now my work in progress is broken into parts. That's why there's three folders there, but this would be the same inspector that you would see for your chapter folders. You can see you have the option of adding a synopsis that will appear as a note card or an image. Click this button right here to toggle that default and all you have to do is drag an image file into this black rectangle and when you view the folder in court board mode you will see the image rather than the note card synopsis. Moving down the inspector, we have labels. Now you can give your folder one of the default labels. We have ideas, notes, character notes, chapter, scene. If none of those fit, then you can click edit and give it a custom label. In this case, I'm going to create a label titled part and that's going to separate my part folders from my chapter folders. Double click on the color swatch to change the color for your label and that's what will show up in note card view on each folder or file with that particular label. You can also create custom titles. In a previous work I had scenes from a lot of different points of view so I created a POV title and created custom labels so that I could label each scene with the point of view, color code it, and keep track of it. So you can use that however benefits your manuscript. You can also change the status of your folder to keep track of what you've done, what you still have to do, which revision, you have completed for each file or folder. This is great if you work out of order. If you go into your metadata settings there, you can actually change the default status so that when you create a file or folder, it will show up as, in this instance, we're gonna set it as to do. Moving down, you can see when the file was modified or created. You can choose whether to include and compile. That is a wonderful tool if you do not want to include all of your files or folders in the compile. You can also add notes about the specific chapter. After notes, we have references. Now this is the same as we saw in the project references. You can add references for the specific chapter. Internal references, external references, 
Here you can actually go through your computer and add files. Again, these will not be stored in the Scrivener project. It will only create a link so that you can access them outside the project. After references, we have keywords. This is a super easy way to make your files and folders simple to find. You can add a specific keyword, again, to a chapter, to a scene, and then you can search for a specific keyword and find all of the files or folders that are tagged with that word. You could use this to denote settings, character involvement, emotions, flashbacks. There are so many different ways to use this. It's one of the most flexible tools in the program and probably one of the more underutilized. You can also add custom metadata to a file or folder. Again, just making everything super searchable. And then we have one of my favorites, snapshots. If you have not used snapshots, you are missing out. All you do is select your file or folder and press this little plus. Boom, you have a snapshot of what that file or folder looks like at this point in time. You can change the label so you know what it is. Maybe a first draft, second draft, maybe before you made some major change that you're not sure about. Well, if you decide, man, I shouldn't have done that. I want to go back to the way it was before. You can. Just roll over to snapshots, press roll back, and it'll go directly back to what you had before. No harm, no foul. The last tool in our inspector is comments and footnotes. So when you're actually working in the text, you can leave a comment like you may be familiar with in Microsoft Word. Leave your comment and all of your comments and footnotes will show up in that spot in the inspector so you can see exactly what you're working with without going back through the entire document looking for comments. They're all right there in one place. You can see the inspector for a file is really similar to the inspector for a folder. We have the synopsis option here that shows up on our note card when we're in court board view. We have labels. We can add document notes. You see here I have a little note about something I want to include in this scene. We can also decide whether we want the note card or the image. And we can add metadata for our files so we can find our scenes and never have to hunt through our manuscript for specific things. All we have to do is label it as we go and it's there. And that is Scrivener's Inspector in a nutshell. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope this was helpful and you learned something new about Scrivener and how to make things easier for yourself while you're writing. Remember my Scrivener affiliate links are in the description so if you do not have the program and you would like to buy it, I would really appreciate you going through those links. As always, leave a comment if you have any questions, if there's anything I can help you with, I'm always here. Be sure to like if you enjoyed this video, subscribe if you want to see more, and I will see y'all next time.